Dewey. dedicate this to my cousin Steven. He inspired this piece. Thank this, you, sir. this piece is called Addiction. I don't know how I got I don't know how I got to this place. I started doing it on Fridays after work to relieve stress. My friends would encourage this Friday activity because they say I'm fun to be around when I'm in that state of mind. It keeps me up all night, but I don't have to work on Saturday, so it's cool. But then the Friday fix became a Tuesday itch and a Thursday rash. I was making it to work on time, but I was getting tired. I needed something to keep me awake. So I started doing my thing in between time during lunchtime. It's not like anybody would smell it on my breath. Just a little something to maintain, that's all. I was in control. Except for that day I got pulled over by the cops for an unsafe lane change. But that was just a traffic violation, no big deal. I thought I had it under control, but now I'm doing it every day. I think about it all day during work and when I get out of work, sometimes I have to stop at this spot to get right and then go home. My desire is increasing and what I thought I had under control now controls me. When I don't feed the fire, my body shakes, leaving me with no choice but to feed my habit to ease the ache. The situation has my budget out of whack. It's affecting work and my family knows I'm hooked. So I agree, so I agree to meet with this group who can help me figure out what to do about it. When I get to this place, people are taking turns speaking at a mic. The stories they told about their life made me laugh and sometimes they made me cry. I felt their pain because their pain was my pain. I know now I didn't have to be ashamed. I could get up in front of that mic and tell them who I am and what I became. I could tell them how I got started, just Fridays at first, reading poems of resistance like Claude McKay. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs making their mock at our accursed lot. Or Maya Angelou, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. My friends encouraged poetry on Fridays after work because they said, because they would start freestyling and before you know it, we're reacting to the rhythm of that moment in time with people looking for words to finish other people's rhymes. I could tell them how Fridays became Tuesdays and Thursdays, how I began to inhale nouns, adjectives, and verbs, and exhale fragments, sentences, and paragraphs, how my poetry began to bleed into work time when in between time I found myself thinking in rhymes, dying for the end of work better chimes so I could be free to write my poetry in a spoken word state of mind. I could tell them about the cops that gave me a ticket because I swerved around a bend. The day a rhyme took control of me and I reached for my pen. I could tell them how I think, walk, and talk poetry every day. Thinking about the words and how they roll off my tongue. Finding the poetry and ad signs in every hip-hop song. I could tell them how my sleep is disrupted by Nikki Giovanni's words. In my mind, you're a clock and I'm the second hand sweeping around you 60 times an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days in a year, and an extra day in a leap year, cause that's the way, that's the way, that's the way I feel about you. Her words will make me tremble and shake, forcing me to read a poetry lullaby to cure the ache. I could tell them how poetry books, CDs, and shows are putting pressure on my nickels and dimes, and how all this poetry time has me forgetting to pay my bills on time. I could tell them everything at this open mic, exposed to the lights where the audience swallows your words with snaps and claps to let you know they heard. Or I could just tell them my name is Yuli Martinez, and I'm a poet-holic. Oh, oh, oh.